let's talk about the Babolat Pure Aero VS. I'm not quite sure when the Pure Aero VS was released. I think it's a new model from last season, uh, maybe this season, I'm not quite sure. But I do know it came on the heels of the Pure Drive VS, which was kind of interesting. The Pure Aero VS is basically the reborn Pure Storm, I think, if the Racket Heritage is correct. Um, currently being played by at least a couple of ATP guys, Jack Sock, FAA, and Ryan Harrison. I don't, hopefully you can see the specs on this. It's supposed to be 305 grams. <laughs> plus or minus seven, which is amazing. 98 square inch, stiffness rating of 70. Standard 27 inch racket goes from 21, 23 to 22 at the throat. 16 by 20. Let's see how good uh, Babolat specs are. Alright, so we'll get the weight first. Again, it's supposed to be a 305 gram racket. Let's get this stuff off. Wow, that comes in right at spec. 305 out of the box. Next is the balance. Babolat says this thing is supposed to be 9 points headlight or at 31.5 mil. Let's see how it does. And that comes in closer to 10 points headlight, but not bad. Not bad at all, Babolat. So what I wanted to do for this particular racket, since, uh, like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the, the handle shape or the size of the flare, is that I'm going to swap out this butt cap um, for a different one. So what I've got here actually is a Prince butt cap um, in size 4 or 4.5. Four and, and I've also got a Wilson. I believe this is a um, Sony Bluetooth compatible, which, you know, so is the Prince. Um, you can tell by the little tab here, the little notch. But uh, these are, I think this is the Wilson Pro Staff butt cap. Uh, so black and green. The Babylon one is black, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the Wilson one for this one. So what we'll do is we'll pop off the butt plate. And then we'll pop off the one from the Wilson. Because, you know, you can't have a Wilson butt cap on a Babylon racket. And uh, for the most part, these butt plates are, um, they fit most other butt caps. So I found that the Yonix ones fit with the Wilsons and vice versa. So again, so we'll just fit the Babolat one right in there. And uh, there you go. Low key stealth. Can't even tell that this is a Wilson butt cap, but this will improve the flare. Just make sure that's on there nice and tight. Uh, it's not quite perfect, but close enough. It's not going to fall off. All right, so let's get this grip off. And then we will put on the leather. And, you know, you, you may not want to do this. You know, some folks like to keep the synthetic stock one on there. Um, it's a matter of preference. I don't like synthetic grips. Not for any reason other than I think the leather... Uh, enhances the feel of the bevels and it adds mass or weight in this case to the racket in a spot that's relatively low impact to the swing weight. What is the swing weight? 
So the swing weight here stock, it says 290 kilograms per square centimeter. So 290, which is relatively low. Unlike my swing weights right around the 320, 320, 325 range. That's fine. You know, for some of you who are a bit squeamish about working on your own rackets, like I said, uh, um, if you choose to use the racket as it comes, it's perfectly fine. Just for giggles, let's find out how much this weighs. So the overgrip, or so the grip and the adhesive tape is good for 21 grams. Is that right? Yeah, 21 grams. Interesting. Or right, and the and the butt plate actually. All right, so I'm gonna go get this butt cap off and then put the new one on. I'll be right back. So I was just headed downstairs and I thought I'd show you guys this first before I finished up the, uh, the butt cap replacement. But here we've got the stock Babolat one. I took that off. Again, this is a size three grip and the butt cap fits pretty flush. This is the Wilson one, again in size Oh, well, this is actually size four, so maybe that's the reason why. But this is a Wilson four and a half, and it doesn't fit quite so nicely on the butt or on the handle itself. So we're going to have to fix that a little bit before we put on the actual butt cap. And we'll do that with some electrical tape. I also use this as finishing tape on some of my grips, but I've got some extra laying around. This doesn't add much weight, but what we'll do is we'll build up the back end of the handle just a little bit, not a lot, but enough to where that butt cap isn't just floating around there. And we'll put maybe three wraps. All right, a couple of wraps of electrical tape, the new butt plate and butt cap, and that fit is much nicer now, so no more play. All right, let's get some staples on this, and I'll be right back. Now we're back. We've got the butt cap installed. Took about four staples. Let's get a quick weight check, see where we're at. All right, so 289. So we're a couple of grams heavier, not by a lot. Shouldn't make a difference in the, in the final product since we're not adding a ton of weight with the new butt cap and tape. All right, so I have an old head leather grip laying around. It's not one of the fancy finest calfskin ones, but uh, still a nice leather grip and one that uh, we're gonna use. The grip itself, is 22 grams and it should be cut to length because it's a pretty standard I've been using it for standard size racket so hopefully we won't have to trim off too much you know so for those of you who have used this uh, this butt cap these well, Wilson Pro Staff ones I'm not sure what this little tab is here it's got a cutout as you can see I don't know if you can see that in the video or not but there's a cutout here I'm assuming it's for a, a grip starter, so that's what I'll do. If it's not, you know, let me know in the comments, but that's how I'm using it. Also, for those of you who have questions about how to put a new butt cap on, uh, as far as a staple goes, I have a video on that on my uh, head pallet replacement video. You can check it out. Uh, but I do use a pneumatic stapler since that is as far as I know, the only true fire way to replicate how it's on there from the factory. Alright, let's 
make sure we get this grip on the right way. Alrighty, so we've got the leather on and then we'll finish it off with some I think this is half inch electrical tape. All right, so we've got the bear racket as it's gonna be strung up. Let's get a new weight check. And the new static weight is 314. No strings, no overgrip. So we're going to probably add about seven grams with the overgrip and about 15 grams with the strings. So about another 25 or so, give or take, which should put us right around 340 ish. Uh, and that's a good number. All right, so I'll get some strings in this and be right back. Again, we're going to string it up with Hyper G 17 gauge at 50 pounds. All right, we're back. This is strung up with the Solenco Hyper G and 16 light gauge at 50 pounds. And again, it's a 16 by 20. Um, the stringing density doesn't seem all that bad. It's not, you know, it's not wide like a 16 by 19, but, um, you know, it's not terribly close either. So I think the... Uh, the launch angle and spin should be okay, but we'll find out. Uh, again, 16 light gauge Solenco Hyper G at 50 pounds. And off the stringer, it's 331 grams. That's with the strings and the leather grip. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of the same. We're right at about, right at nine points headlight. So it's on spec All right, as best as, you know, I've seen from Babylon at least so far, not too bad. Uh, we'll throw a rubber band dampener. All right, there's that. So white over grip. All right, and our final racket, as it's going to play on court right now, comes in at 338. And with the added weight of the overgrip, it now comes in at... Call it 11 points headlight. All right, so totally usable. We'll see how the stability is uh, on volleys. Okay, so we're here at a local club called Kinetics in uh, suburban PA. And my partner and I, my partner who is actually a very high level 4-0, he's a, a winning 4-0 borderline 4-5 player um, we had some issues with the court because the the service line was definitely dead the ball was not where it's supposed to be but you can tell from the ball action on my side now I'm on here on the near court um, the spins good um, it seemed like the ball was coming off of the string bed uh, at a predictable angle except for those spots where uh, I didn't hit the ball exactly in the sweet spot. And in a couple of these shots you can see um, some of the slice shots that were good. Like the backhand slice was great. It was deep and penetrating um, unless it was a backhand chip. That was kind of defensive. You saw a couple of seconds ago. It was pretty deep and you know had enough action on it to make it uh, predictable. 
but effective still. But definitely this racket, the Pure Aero VS, despite the playing weight around 340 uh, grams plus, is not one that's going to give you a ton of free power. So unlike the Pure Drive and unlike the Pure Aero, this racket is one that requires you to have you know, very long, at least medium long strokes or at least good technique with uh, feet set and you know a chance to swing through the ball which I do not but to the extent that the ball was coming off the racket at an angle that I expected and doing some good things on the court because of the spin I was happy to see that um, no comfort or no discomfort rather on the elbow um, during this hitting session uh, I was swinging up pretty good and the racket felt very stable um, especially those that were hit along the sweet spot and along the long axis of the racket. The one area where I did notice some drop off in, in any kind of uh, usable power was when the ball was hit towards the edges of the frame, especially towards the outer edges, um, towards 3 and 9. Um, the racket you here see, uh, the racket you see here now doesn't have any additional lead uh, on the frame or on the hoop and it could use a little bit I'd say probably about a gram or two uh, not at 12 but maybe around uh, 10 or 2 or 3 and 9 to help stabilize some of the low launch that happens when the ball hits off towards the edge of the frame backhand slice was effective um, backhand chips and backhand drive slices were great. There was good depth to the ball and good spin. There were a couple of sh uh, shots here where I hit against my partner where the ball on the backhand slice was very effective and you know had some crazy action to it. Uh, but definitely this is a racket and a string setup where you know you can't you can't take a swing off. You definitely need to be hitting strong um, and have at least medium long loopy swings to get the most out of this racket and the best benefit you see is that um, the ball action definitely dives and dips up and drives through the court you get decent depth um, directional control was outstanding as long as I had a, time, a chance to set my feet and really pick a target and aim for it and if I did that 16 by 20 string pattern definitely um, offered you that extra, well, offered me that extra layer of control and directional stability that I expected from, you know, a racket of this kind of variety. Um, I, I would say it's good for those intermediate, stronger intermediates to advanced players, ones that can definitely utilize the effective mass of the racket and the string pattern and the string uh, s uh, spin benefits that it provides. I think Hyper G was a good match for this racket. Um, in a couple of these clips you will see that I, I was using a different string um, that was Grapple Snake Sniper, which I thought was also very good. But on that particular racket I had uh, about a gram over at 11 and 1, which definitely changed the feel of the racket. I didn't think it was necessary for stability purposes, but I kind of wanted to find out what it felt like. Um, my recommendation for advanced and med intermediates would be to add about a gram or two to three and nine um, and go with a string that's comfortable for your arm. For me, that's Hyper G because that's you know, the one that I've been playing for the most, the longest length of time and is definitely my baseline string and one that I feel most uh, comfortable with as far as launch angle and predictability and control. All right, so thank you for watching. This was the review on the Pure Aero VS, and uh, we'll see you next time with a different racket review.
Well, it's not what it's supposed to be. 